Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Leader Celebration. So glad that y'all are here. Uh, if y'all want to stand, we're just going to join. We're going to start with a couple songs, but first I'm just going to pray, and we'll roll right into some worship. Lord, thank you for the people in this room. Lord, thank you for their heart to uh, serve you and serve this church. We just pray that tonight would be um, just a wonderful afternoon uh, of gathering together to sing your praises, to talk about what you're doing in our lives and what you're doing in the life of this church, God. Um, we just want to give you the glory first and foremost. So um, just be glorified in our praises, uh, Lord. We worship you. I seek praises to your name. Praises to your name. The name that's so much higher than all names. Give him all the honor. It's all honor to your name. Honor to your name, the name that's so much greater than all names. So be lifted up, be lifted higher. Be lifted up, be lifted higher. I seek praises, I seek praises to your name. Praises to your name. The name that's so much higher. Than old names, honor and all honor to your name, honor to your name, the name that's so much greater than old names. Your name is life, your name is hope inside me, hope inside me. Your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds me. Your name is life. Your name is hope inside me, hope inside me. Your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds. His name is life. Your name is life. Your name is hope. Hope inside me. Your name is love, a love that always finds me, always finds me. Billy 
lifted up, be lifted higher, be lifted up, be lifted higher in my mother's womb. You formed me with your hand, known and loved by you. Before I took a breath, when I doubted, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter, I'm a canvas and a clay. As you make all things work together, for my future and for my good you make all things work together for your glory and for your name there's a healing light it's just beyond the clouds Though I've walked through fire I see clearly now And I know nothing has been wasted No failure or mistake You're an artist in the potter On the canvas and the clay As you make all things work together for my future and for my good you make all things work together for your glory and for your name oh for your name name alone when I doubt it Lord remind me I'm wonderfully made you're an artist in the potter I'm the canvas in the clay and I know nothing has been wasted no failure or mistake you're an artist in the potter I'm a canvas in the clay you make all things work together for my future and for my good. You make all things work together for your glory and for your name when I doubt it. Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist in the potter. I'm the canvas in the clay. I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. You're an artist in the potter. I'm the canvas in the clay. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. Lord, we know that you're doing a work in us and that you're not finished with us yet. So let us be open to whatever that looks like. That we would pursue after you with our whole hearts. That we would be open to being challenged. That we would not be afraid of the calling that you have for us 
that we would step into that boldly, whatever that may be. That when we hear just something that you're whispering over us even, that we would be all ears, that we would be attuned to what that is, that we would pursue after that. So God, we just ask for clarity in your vision for our lives. As we know, when we pursue that together, incredible things can happen here, can happen in our community. So tonight we just gather, just thankful for the ways that you're moving in each of us, being able to celebrate that in one another being able to honor that in one another and give glory to you for that, the work that you're doing here. We just ask for more of all these things, Lord, and we pray, amen. Lord, have a seat. All right, well, good afternoon. How y'all doing? Good. You know, it's so funny because we, um, we kept calling this leader night but it's only 3.33. And so like in our staff planning, we kept calling it leader night. Where's Pat? Pat could not get off of it. And I was like, we're calling it leader celebration. It's only going to be at 3.30 in the afternoon. Anyway, so good afternoon. So glad to have everybody. I'm, I really appreciate you. Kind of like Sunday afternoons, I know like a variety of things could be happening. You could be at a pumpkin patch. I heard a lot of that going on this morning. You could be taking a nap, which is what I was doing before I came over here. You know what I'm talking about? Football game, a little bit low. Just where you can hear the commentators talking just a little bit. <laughs> Drifting off, mouth half open, drool. And then for me, it's, <laughs> what, what, what just happened? You know, anyway, end up doing that two or three times in the nap, and then I'm good. So anyway, so I'm glad we're here together. Um, we're not going to spend just a really long time here, and, uh, but we just felt like it was a good time, an important time to go ahead and gather all of us back together as leaders here at the church. And and um, just kind of reconnect and, and talk about our vision and mission and, and what we're doing and all of that kind of stuff. But before I even get into that, I just want to say thank you. I mean, just thank you for what you do here at this church. I feel like today for me has just been a big thank you to our church because, well, basically y'all are awesome. I mean, I just think our church is amazing and uh, what y'all do and, and uh, you're serving and leading in so many different ways. And, and really, you know, no church, but our church will not move forward without leadership. It will not. Not without you and what you do and the way that you pray and you give of your time and your, your money and your service and everything. I mean, it matters here. It keeps us moving forward and moving in the direction that God has asked us to move in. So anyway, I want to thank you for that. I see we've got several members of our executive team here, and I just want to say thank you to our executive team. They're the ones that work so much behind the scenes that, you know, they're not like greeting out front and all this kind of stuff, although some of them do multiple serving types of things. But, but they're meeting every month, and they, our team has met every month during COVID on Zoom. Uh, we're Zoom specialists now and all that kind of stuff, but we've been praying and strategizing and in, inviting God to show us the direction for our church. And, you know, they do so much um, behind the scenes that keeps us moving forward in a vision. So anyway, I'm just grateful for all of our executive team members as well. And so, and I really appreciate all of you who are helping out on Sundays. That's a big deal right now to actually come out and come to church on a Sunday and help us do what we're doing. People are still kind of tentative and I totally get that. Um, but I'm grateful for all of our folks who are, who are helping out. So, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't know what, and nobody really does, the long-term impact of COVID will be on our church or any other church that's out there, but it has certainly, you know, it has changed some things in the, in the church realm as well as lots of other things. But, you know, if there's one thing I know that has um, at least, I think, created a thirst out there among people is a desire to be together. Uh, you can only do church online for so long, I think, and I've heard that from lots of people lately over the last couple of weeks. They appreciate us so glad that we're doing that. So I'm still doing that and are grateful for it. But, you know, as time wears on, attention wears out. And so, you know, there's so much of that. But this morning I was reminded of how important it is to gather. Um, I don't know if you know Eunice Torbett, but uh, she just came back today. And she hadn't been here since March. And, and uh, so I just caught her as she was coming out, she and her daughter. And, and uh, we just started talking. She's like, I am so glad to come back this morning. It's so good to be here. And. And, you know, we just couldn't for whatever reason in the past, but we could come this Sunday. And so me and my daughter came and she started talking about it, started getting tears in her eyes, started crying. And I was like, I think I'm going to cry. This is a very emotional day for me. And I mean, I was just like, Eunice, I, I just appreciate your passion and, 
She was like, I, I just have to be here. And I was telling her, her daughter, like, we have to be at church. We have to be with, with our, our, you know, other believers and our friends and our people at church. Like, it's so important for us to do that. And I recognize now how much I've been missing you know, over the last several months. And so it was just so good and, and just a reminder of, you know, we're, we're called the body of Christ for a reason because we all belong to each other. And, uh, and we need each other. And while that can happen in a variety of ways, there is something special about community and relationship and being together and, and, uh, and doing what we do as a church. And so anyway, so I just think that is um, just so good. But, um, but uh, we're going to continue to find ways to, to, to allow God to use us as a church as we go forward. Again, who knows what next year is going to hold. You know, I said back at Easter, we'd be done with this in the fall. <laughs> what, what was I thinking? Anyway, I was like, oh, we'll be done with this in the fall, man. It'll all be over with. I'm like, nope, we're still here. We're still doing this thing. Um, but anyway, so this whole thing will be over in, you, you tell me. You fill in the blank. Please tell me because I want to know when, all, when somebody says, we're done and we do this. Anyway, I don't know what that is. But we're going to trust the Lord and we're going to keep doing whatever the next thing is he asks us to do. We'll do that. And, uh, and trust him as we go forward. And so, um, so that's how we're going to handle it. Uh, but anyway, so today what I would like to do is, is take you all the way back into the long past, all the way back to January, January 26th, to be exact. That was when we had our dream night. You remember that? It just seems like years ago when we had done that. We gathered here, we ate together, we talked about vision, we talked about all the things God was going to do through us and our big dreams of the future. And Man, it just seems like forever ago. Anyway, so that's one reason why we've gathered, because it was like, we should talk about that again. It feels like that got put on hold or pause or shelved or something in the process of shutting down, you know, and, and in some ways it kind of did, even though God was at work in the church and all that. But, but we thought, yeah, we should probably get back together and start having these conversations again about what we're doing and, and where we're going and why we're doing that. So, um, so that's why we're here today. And, you know, I think about the one thing that we talked about was that our vision as a church is is so much more than just things like building a bigger building to hold more people. Like that's something that we've determined is not going to be a, a thing for us. But if, if we could build the kingdom, wouldn't that be better? And building the kingdom doesn't take a bigger building. We just build people who make disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples, right? And so that's kind of where we got focused on for this year and for the years to come is how can we do more of that? How can we build the kingdom by making uh, disciples and having a vision for that. And so that's what we talked about that night. Um, also talked about just the idea that, look, this will happen when people really figure out who God has designed them to be. Like if they know their gifts, if they know their passion, if they understand how their story fits, if every single person in our church genuinely grabbed hold of that and they were released to go out and do what God's calling them to do, it'd be unbelievable. Like that would build the kingdom in this community and around the world. So I think the better investment is in that direction. And uh, so that's what we talked about that night, how important that is. And, and even during COVID, though, so many good things happening. So many people using their gifts and passions and stories. And really, ever since that night, I mean, some people literally were like, man, I heard from God that night in January when we talked about that. And, and I have started pursuing this idea or that idea. I've started leading in this way or leading in that way. And so it's already happening, and it's great. But we just want to see a whole lot more of it. So... Um, Speaking of people hearing the call, I thought it would be good, instead of me just talking about everybody else's story, to have actually somebody come and talk a little bit about their call and the way God is using them uh, these days in our church and around the community. So we thought about Lisa Stevens. So Lisa wins today. She gets to come up here and talk to me. So y'all just welcome Lisa and... Um, she serves in a couple of capacities that we're going to talk about up here, and don't be afraid of the microphone. It, it, it won't bite you. Just hold it close to your mouth so we can hear you. And, um, and she's married to that guy, Randy. Randy has been here since pretty much day one, and you can just give him a round of applause for being Randy. How about that? And uh, so when you talk about somebody who's done some serving and all of that in our church, that man has done a bunch and uh, knows what that's all about. And um, yeah, so we got lots of stories about church from the old days. But anyway, so then you jump into that story with Randy, and now you're doing your own thing here in so many great ways. And um, so a couple of things I've got Lisa talking about is just um, her work with a group that she leads, and then also her work with Hattie's Home. So we're going to work on those two ideas. But first of all, just tell me about you. Just tell us about you. Okay, well, I am Lisa Stevens, 
and I have, um, I'm a seamstress and embroiderer, and I have a, an embroidery shop inside of Halls, which Randy owns, and so we run that business together and have since the beginning. I have been a member of Cornerstone since 2005, and so Holy I smoke. started. smoke, has it been that long? Wow, yes. amazing. <laughs> and I started um, uh, volunteering in the cafe because I wanted to serve somehow in the church, and I did that with my children. And so mm -hmm. my children and I would come and, and serve uh, in the cafe when we were still washing mugs. And so, uh, yes. yeah. mm. <laughs> um, and my, my son was eight when we started doing that, and my son is 22 now. And so um, uh, that's neat. And so I've served in various capacities um, wow. over the years. And I met Randy um, through the church. And right now, we can, so we've been married for almost seven years. And we can say that all four of our children were confirmed and baptized here. Wow. So. Yeah. So you're what we call an old timer. And I don't mean that about your age. No, so, it is about my age. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm with you there. <laughs> the, yeah, anyway. We've been doing this a while now, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. It's good. Well, um, you lead a group of ladies. My wife is a part of this group and mm -hmm. loves this group. And, uh, you know, it seems like that's just become a very solid group, really been together. Have, did y'all meet all through COVID, like ever since March? Did y'all do like on Zoom and stuff? Well, no. I mean, some. We tried Zoom. Yeah. Zoom was awkward. And, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was weird, but we didn't. We didn't start meeting. Well, we started meeting again, socially distanced, I think in June. Yeah. And we met a couple times over the summer in parks where we could all put our chairs six feet away from mm. each other. Still hey, sitting. let's talk in a very personal way. And yeah, it's well, great. We, we, we didn't really talk about personal things, but we did talk <laughs> because we all just wanted to see each other. <clears throat> yeah. And because we, we enjoy each other. Our group has been together for three years and um, we have had some hits and some misses as far as studies go, but we get together in the fall in the spring and we take off the winter in the summer but um yeah we've we get together at my house once a week um for dinner and for our discussion okay let me just pause you right there becky says that she's the most amazing cook are you cooking any for that or is it okay just her okay because randy he's pretty good on his own right but uh yeah cooks all the time and so I get the opportunity to do recipes I want to do um, oh, okay <laughs> and that Randy doesn't necessarily want to eat <laughs> so <laughs> wow we'll deal with that later okay that's like a whole nother sermon series that we'll talk about yeah I have a specialty chicken recipe that he doesn't care for but the ladies mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. so I, mm. I, I make that for them nice Yep. So, um, so y'all meet every Wednesday at, was it seven o'clock, six o'clock? We meet from six to eight. Six to eight, okay. Sometimes six to nine. It depends on how much we're laughing. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of that. Yes. Um, okay, so what led you to start this group, be involved in this group, all these kinds of things? Well, I've led lots of groups, you know, over the years, but to lead this group, I don't know. I think God was telling me that I needed to make some friends. <laughs> and so you can literally make friends by leading a group. Well, I'm just saying, if I'm you're hoping. looking for friends, start a group. Well, no, I just wanted to get together with other women because I hadn't done that in a while. And so I, I chose to lead a group of um, women. And my goal was to have them be women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s and to have it just be women. And you didn't have to be single. Most of the women in my group, actually all the women in my group are married. And they are doing this group with me independent of their husbands. Hmm. And this, the church at the time had a lot of couples groups and had a lot of groups for young couples. Hmm. And so I wanted to do something different. And you did. I did. <laughs> and so I guess you could, I mean, you said it yourself. You felt like God led you to do it. Like, I should do this. Yeah, I didn't hear a voice or anything, but I have a hard time saying no. Yeah. And so um, I've, I've been asked to, to lead some groups. Okay. And, and so. Well, you know, when you have a gift and you have, I would imagine, a gift of hospitality. Well, that's crazy. And of <laughs> leading women. We did the, the GPS and I hosted one at the house that had all new members. I didn't have my regular group okay. in the GPS because a lot of those people were leading their own groups. 
but I had new um, women come, and I did learn that one of my one of my um, gifts was hospitality. Yeah. So through find your place and yes. taking the GPS, you discovered you have a gift of hospitality. I did. So everybody taking that? We'll get yeah. to that later. Right. Okay. Just on your GPS, do it. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Um, like, how do you think the group is shaping you as you lead that? Well, I have been taken out of my comfort zone in a lot of things associated with the group. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel comfortable with all of the ladies in the group, but um, I've been taken out of my comfort zone because we pray, and sometimes praying out loud is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I have been asked, uh, Karen Yandel did mm -hmm. one of the, um, the videos for our celebration yep. in January, and she asked me to be a teacher for the, um, what is it called? Created for a Purpose. Mm -hmm. And so that was supposed to be this summer, and I got asked to be a teacher for Created for a Purpose, and I'd never taught anyone how to sew. So that's something that I was looking forward to doing that didn't happen. And then I am now in the, um, disciples made group mm -hmm. and that's sort of an intense six month um, process and so those all of those things are sort of that's I'm being shaped that way <laughs> you should be you're being you're involved in everything holy smoke and we're not even done yet so <laughs> awesome so you've really been shaped in that way of just getting out of your comfort zone though that's a I mean 100% golly if there's one message that we could take from that is just you know we all need to be in that kind of a way just saying God whatever even outside my comfort zone in fact it's like I always say, Jesus is not in the boat. He's out on the water. That's where it's scary and dark, but he's out there, and he's calling us out on that water to do something maybe we've never done. So That was actually one of the studies that we did. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat? Yes. That's a good quality study right there. Um, well, one last question about the group, which is just where do you see God at work in the group? Well, I think God's at work in the group because each – one of the women in my group are they're amazing and they show up and they can be themselves and they it's safe for them uh -huh. to do that um, they can come and laugh they can come and cry they know that they can they are they can trust people in the group and our group has sort of stepped out in an additional direction and we found a community service that we wanted to do together and so that's where that's where God is in our group right now. Okay, is that Hattie's home? It is Hattie's. Okay, home. let's transition to Hattie's home. Okay, okay. That would be a good transition. What is Hattie's home, and how did y'all get involved in that? Hattie's home is, as they describe, a group home for girls in crisis, and these girls are ages 18, no, 12 to 18, who have been referred by various places. Um, including Alabama DHR. And so these, these girls are out um, and they live together on a, it's a beautiful property in Opelika and they have a home. It used to be a um, hunting plantation mm -hmm. or a hunting ranch for, for a person who donated the land in the home and they have fit the home to meet all the specifications and guidelines to be approved to be a DHR home. Mm -hmm. Uh, over not too far from Sportsplex and uh, Opelika like over there, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's beautiful, <clears throat> really. Um, they do an amazing job over there. Um, so, what led y'all to want to be a part of what's happening over there? Well, Gerald Harris is um, a member of my group, and she's also sits on the board of directors for Hatties. Oh, so and she required y'all to do it? Okay, no. I see. <laughs> no. I see how this works now. I see Jill no. back there. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Jill. <laughs> Um, Jill and I went about a, I don't know, about a year, maybe 14 months ago, and we had breakfast at another broken egg. It was delicious and expensive. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> she asked, no, uh, she asked if that would be something that, as a, as a leader, I would be willing for the gr that direct, our group to go in that direction. And um, that's how we got involved. So during one of our normal meetings per month, we go on the first Wednesday of every month to meet with the, um, the young girls at Hattie's. Okay. And so um, why is it important for you to serve there? Like, what's the difference that's being made there? Well, the, the girls at Hattie's, I, I think the difference that we're making out there is that they, we are consistent. Mm -hmm. 
with them. We don't, we are good role models, I think. And I think we learned over all the COVID because even though our group wasn't meeting, we still went to uh -huh. meet with the girls uh -huh. to fulfill our, our obligation and our promise to them every month, even though our group wasn't meeting. We've continued to do that over the summer. We only missed one and that was April, um, but we've been doing it for over a year. But over the course of time, how do I put this? The girls, it's a Christian-based home, but we don't go in there with any of that mm -hmm. in mind. Mm -hmm. We just go and we talk and we eat and we listen, but when we just sort of relaxed and just started doing things with them, it started this summer when they all made, what, they made the dance team, they made the flag team, all those girls were part of those activities. And they put their uniforms on for us, they did their flag routines for us, they did all of these things, and it felt like they trusted us enough to do that. So basically, I feel like sometimes we show up and we're just a group of moms uh. that are just there to pat the heads of the girls and say, that looks great, you're doing great, keep doing what you're doing, and so. So probably girls who've not had a lot of encouragement in their life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that right there, I'm sure, is just like cold water on a parched throat, you know, just being encouraged, being, you know, just cheered on and what they're doing and. Well, it kind of came to fruition this past month because the first um, Wednesday in October, we took pumpkins and we painted pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And so when the girls saw us pull in, and for some reason we all pulled in at the exact same time, it was kind of odd that all of our cars pulled in and they ran out to their cars to see us and they didn't know the activity that they were doing. They mm -hmm. didn't know they were going to create, we were going to paint pumpkins, but... Um, they did, they ran out to see us. And that was really, that, it touched my heart. I don't know about, mm. I don't know about you, Ann and Jill, but they were, um, they were very, very happy to see us and they look forward to us coming to visit. Yeah. yeah. So I would guess that's kind of how you're seeing God work out there? Yes. Yeah. And I think it's shaping all of us too. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine. the girls. And the girls, you know, they, they all have to share their, their mom, Anita, um, but they don't, they can corner one of us if they want to talk. And I don't say corner is a bad thing, but they can, yeah, that's not what I meant. But they can come <laughs> and talk to us and, and, sh and share and be encouraged. And so, I so think that's can, good for them. Can anybody be involved at Hattie's Home? Well, you can, but you just can't go out there and visit. We had to go through an application process with Hattie's and we had to um, go have a background check. And we were all fingerprinted, so okay. we all we all did that. That was um, that was an expense, but it it was worth it. Yeah, but and because these are girls in difficult situations, that sometimes we don't right. they don't need to be found and no, by families. No, they don't need to be um, they don't need to be exposed to tons and tons of, of people. Mm -hmm. But Hattie's has um, they have a wish list on their website, Hattie'sHome.com. Mm -hmm. And they they have a bunch of things. They have um, they have a fun wish list for fun things, but then they need household items, kitchen items, just regular things around that you need to run a household. Hmm. So they have that. And then they also have if you don't have an Amazon charity chosen, pick them because Amazon gives a percentage of purchases to that Great. to Patty's. Yeah, so if you're looking for some place, that would be a good one for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so back to the idea of calling, you would definitely say that, that these are two places you've been called to, you know? It is. Uh, that you've sort of maybe found your place. Well, Jill called you to one of them. But anyway, no, we're going to say God <laughs> called you to one of those um, because when you find yourself in a place like that, you know, God has us there. And, and um, so that's a great thing. And I'm grateful that you heard that call and choose to do it. And I know it's a blessing. Um, so how would you encourage others to take a step into serving when God calls, maybe outside your comfort zone? What's that mean? Well, I guess in the beginning, um, sometimes I tend to make things more difficult than they, have, than they are or than they have to be. And so in being called, it's okay to do simple things and to just make a difference simply. Mm -hmm. we, I make a difference with food. Um, <laughs> 
That's a good way to make a difference, yeah. Yeah, but, but you can do simple things, like our best, some of our best, um, our best events with the girls at Hattie's were ones that we put together in about 48 hours because I was a little lazy. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be elaborate. You don't have to teach. You don't have to do any of those things to lead a successful group. So just being present, really. Exactly. All right. You did it. I know. I'm, I'm thank you. Uh, Y'all thank Lisa just that. for being here and for sharing a little bit of what she's doing here. I'm grateful for you. Thank I appreciate you. what you do and just the way that you do it. Lisa's so humble. I mean, good grief. We could talk a lot um, just about what all she's about. Um, but I wanted you to hear from her just because it's like a couple of things. One is stepping out of your comfort zone. And I know that's something that, you know, Lisa has found ways to do. And that's something we do intentionally. That's not something we hope happens. That's something we have to make happen. And uh, so whether that's us who are here or whether that's other people in our church, you know, we have to help other people learn what it's like to step out of their comfort zones to do things they may have never done before. And uh, but when you do it, it's amazing what happens on the other side of it. Right. That's when God he, he honors our step and uh, and he helps fulfill whatever it is he's calling us to. And he never calls us to something he doesn't first equip us for. So. Um, so thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. And my goal in that, too, is just say, how can we have more of that? You know, how can either we do more of that or how can we encourage and lead other people? How can we let our whole church to take those steps and to see that happen? And so I go back to scriptures that we shared that night in January, and they're just as applicable today. They're scriptures that you've heard a lot. I get that. But they're just scriptures that are so important. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I just talked about that last Sunday, uh, Matthew 16, 18, uh, Jesus talking to Peter, and he says, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, if this church, you know, that we are all a part of, Jesus formed and started, and it is a prevailing church as long as we continue to do what God is calling us to do to get out there and do it. And then Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And then Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We describe this as leading people to know and serve Jesus. You know, this is our call, our mission, going out, making disciples who make disciples and change the world. Really, that's the end of the whole thing, right? Is that we change the world. And hopefully by changing this community, that's how we can do that. But if there's one thing that I know is that, that that growth, that moving out, sort of like the concentric rings that go out will never happen um, without leadership. And um, leadership is the difference maker uh, between any organ, you know, whether any organization will grow and move on or not. And it's true of the church too. And, and that's why, you know, we value leadership here at the church. And, um, and I'm thankful that what we do here is not all up to me. Well, the pastor does that. Well, the pastor should do that. Shouldn't the pastor do that? Should the pastor do that? It's like, man, that would never happen. I have such limited capacity, right? But, but if I can inspire you to also want to take part in this, then we can grow this ministry and, and move it along. And um, John Maxwell, are you familiar with John Maxwell? He wrote the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Everything Known to Mankind. He has like all these books on leadership. And uh, so in the early 2000s, I read like every John Maxwell book on leadership there was. And so in his 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he has this one called the Law of the Lid. And it's this idea that no organization can grow beyond the capacity of its leaders. And uh, that leaders, if they don't grow in their capacity, will be a lid on the organization, right? And uh, so um, leaders can be a lid or they can be a lid lifter by growing themselves and increasing their own capacity. And then they become what you might call um, lid lifters. And in there, he tells this story. And actually, this story has now become a Netflix show called The Founder. Has anybody seen the Netflix show called The Founder? If you have, keep your mouth shut. Okay, so this is a story about these two brothers, Dick and Maurice, who back in 1937 saw, started a small drive-in restaurant in Pasadena, California. You might now know where I'm going with this. Um, after a while, this thing began to grow. Everybody loved it so much that it started to produce. In the first year, they, uh, they cleared like $200,000, which back in that day was a ton of money. And um, as this restaurant began to grow, they began to streamline their processes. They decided they could, uh, they could uh, service their customers within 30 seconds, you know, and so that was their big deal, so they started doing that. Continued to grow. After several years, and back to the mid-50s, their revenue hit $350,000. 
It was unbelievable, actually, what was happening in this restaurant. So um, Dick and Maurice, anybody know their last name? McDonald. So um, as a result of what they had done, and because it became so popular, there were people paying attention to it. And uh, in 1952, they thought they would market it. But they were an incredible failure at marketing. And it really was because they weren't visionaries. They were managers. So all they knew to do was to manage better what they had instead of looking outside and beyond to make something else happen. Then in 1954, this guy named Ray Kroc comes to their restaurant, eats a hamburger, and goes, oh my gosh, this was the best hamburger I've ever had, and you served it to me so fast. And he was so blown away at what they had done. And he starts finding out about their business. And you can go watch the Netflix show and get all the details on this. But um, he realizes that their concept is pretty amazing, but they have no idea what they're doing. They can't replicate this. But he suddenly had a vision of how they could replicate it. And so they sort of joined up. And uh, between 1955 and 59, they succeeded in opening 100 restaurants. Four years after that, there were 500 McDonald's. In 1961, for the sum of $2.7 million, Ray Kroc bought the rights to McDonald's. And then he turned it into this American institution and a global you know, juggernaut in the fast food industry. Here's the thing. McDonald's is now the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue, serves over 69 million customers every day in over 100 countries. Hamburgers! Anyway, McDonald's is the world's second largest private employer with 1.7 million employees. Uh, back in 2018, McDonald's reported earnings of $5.9 billion annual revenue, $21 billion. Hamburgers! My watch keeps dinging every time I say that. Stop it. $21 billion. All because one guy had a vision for what it could be. Because he took that concept and he was able to look outside of it and go, there's a bigger place for this. And really, the only point I tell you that story is because Ray Kroc sort of became a lid lifter on that whole thing. He saw the potential and decided he could be a part of that. And in so many ways, I think that when you look at Jesus in his own life, he was kind of doing that with his disciples. You know, he was an influencer on his disciples' lives, and they didn't know they had any capacity at all. They were just fishermen and tax collectors and rejects and stuff like that. But he brought them in and discipled them and showed them that they could do way beyond anything they ever thought they could. And then they became world changers, didn't they? I mean, we're here today because of what they've done. Twelve people. Like... The possibilities are endless when it comes to what we know about Jesus in the Gospels. Being a leader is also being an influencer. And so at the end of the day, what Jesus started is now being, it's the, the torch has been handed to us in our generation. Keep making disciples. Keep leading the movement. Keep being an influencer. And the more that we do that, the more that people will change. And you know those disciples, uh, it, it has been said of them that they were disruptors. You know, when Jesus left the earth and they were set out and started doing things, they became disruptors because they just disrupted the norm about religion and about faith and life. Uh, literally went to their deaths because of what they believed and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I love that term disruptor. They became a disruptor. And like, I just think back to when we were in the skate center, Randy, track with me all the way back there. Man, we just tried to do things that we didn't know were going to work or not. We just kept trying stuff. And I remember we did a financial series and we had a game show. And like we put money in this booth and we selected somebody who came up there and they grabbed all the money they could in 30 seconds out of this booth. I mean, like it's church and we're doing a game show. We got stuff out under the seats and you could pick that, win a prize. We decided to do baptisms in a blow up pool, mostly because we had to. It was the only way we could do it. But, you know, Methodist churches, especially back then, not many of them immersed people. But we were like, you know, we want people to have the full experience. So if it takes a baby pool to do it, we're going to do it. And sometimes volunteers who were going to be baptized had to go out. And if they were on their volunteer duty that day, they were filling up the pool. They were going to be baptized in. It's like, but that was weird. But, you know, we just kept trying to do things that were different to hopefully make somebody go, well, I should try this thing. You know, they're willing to get out there and do some crazy stuff. And, and even today. How much fun is it to give away $10,000? I mean, it's like, that's just a fun thing to do. But not many churches out there are thinking, we should give away $10,000. I mean, you know, it's like nobody's really thinking that much these days, especially not these days with COVID, you know. But 
hey, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what God will do. How can we continue in that way as a church, I guess is my question. How can we continue to be, I guess, a disruptor of the norm? And how can we try some new things? And, you know, it will happen because we choose to lead that or not, right? I mean, we could just as easily not do anything else. We could not try things. But I hope and my, my prayer is that we would always be willing to step out on that water, you know, to get out in that place that's uncomfortable and to lead other people out on that water and to bring them with us and say, come out here with me. This is going to be kind of crazy. I don't know how it's all going to go, but let's give it a shot. Let's lead a women's group and see what happens. Let's take the women's group to Hattie's home because Jill called us to do it and see what happens. You know, let's try some things. And so I love that. And I love that our church kind of has that DNA and that we keep trying to do those sorts of things. And so one of the phrases that we used back in January was, you can do it, we can help. That is like that philosophy, the sort of the reverse of Home Depot. We just love that, you know. Hey, look, you don't have to bring your call to me and say, Rusty, I think we should do this great idea. Here, you do it. Y'all do it as a church. No, you had the idea. God called you. Guess what? You get to lead that. Now, if there's a way that we can support you and help you do that, awesome. But if you've been called to do it, then do it. Now, what if we had 800 people who all felt that way? Hey, you know, I can do it. And here's how I need help with it. All of a sudden now, we've just released all these people in our community in the world who are now changing everything. And that's what I love. I love that idea. Then we move from what we call addition to multiplication. Addition is where we add one member at a time. That's addition. We could do that. We can keep adding people into the seeds and stuff like that. Or we can do multiplication, which is where we inspire somebody to disciple two other people. Those two people then decide to disciple two other people who decide to disciple. You, you get the point. You get the math. Multiplication. We multiply a movement of the kingdom because we've invested in people's lives. Now, find your place. We talked about that, GPS. That is one of our methods, our tracks for helping people discover their gifts. That is happening, by the way. Pat's kind of reinvigorated. Find your place. So we've got that going. Uh, reminder to you all, find your place is now connect. So whereas you probably went through connect class to join the church. So if somebody's out there and they're like, how do I get plugged in? Where do I get connected? Find your place is the new connect. So I just need you to know that. Pat is leading that. If you know of somebody who needs to go through that class, let him know. They'll find out all about the church and they'll discover their gifts, passions, and story through that time. And we feel like that's a better way. It's a good funnel for everybody to go through. And if you have not done find your place or maybe you did it, maybe you'd like to redo it, let Pat know. Am I right? So he's right there. So, um, Please do that. As leaders, I would value that all of us have been through that process, done the GPS and all of that. That would be a big help so that you know how to tell somebody else about it. I just think that's a game changer for our church. And in there, we learned this thing, this formula that I keep using called character times calling equals, anybody remember? What's the word? All right, put it up there. Character times calling equals impact. impact. Because at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. And when we take the character that that Jesus is developing in us, and it intersects with our calling that Jesus has placed on our lives, and every single one of us has one, right? Everybody has a calling. That's when we get impact. And if we do all of that individually, the whole church has impact. So it takes all of us doing that to make the most impact. So I'm just going to stop right there with all of that. You get what I'm trying to say, what we're trying to do as a church, trying to make this more about building the kingdom, one person at a time, making disciples who make disciples. All of those kinds of things. So here's my challenge. Just as we go today, as you walk out of here, just um, what is your next step in this? Is there, is there a step that you think, I need to take a step here? Maybe it's, like I just said, maybe it's find your place or maybe it's something else, being a part of a community group. You know, if you're not a part of worship groups and serving, all of those three things, find a way to be involved in all of that at a regular, uh, on a regular basis. That would help lead everybody else too so that you know what's going on there. And I'll just ask you this, is there anyone that you're taking along with you on this journey? Is there anybody that, you know, in your life that you're saying, yeah, I'm kind of leading them along the path, whether it's here at our church or not, you know, somebody at work or somebody in the community, somebody in your neighborhood, is there somebody that you're taking with you in this discipleship journey? If not, like we talked about this morning, begin with prayer. Begin to pray and ask God, who is this person I'm supposed to be invested in and how can I do that? You got that? I think that, that would be a win right there. Um, so, okay, that's enough right there. If you're looking for any type of connection into groups and serving and all of that, Suzanne, always right there for us. And so um, she is helping to make those connections right now. 
So Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples. What that tells me is, while part of the mission isn't here, it's mostly out there, right? The mission field is out there. And if one thing COVID has shown us is that we can't depend on Sunday morning and buildings. We need the church to be active and on mission, like we talked about this morning, on mission every day, out there, everywhere we are. And we as leaders get to lead that movement through this church. And I think that's a blessing because we get to do it, right? Not that we have to do it, but we get to do it. And we get to watch God do amazing things through us. So you good with that? All right. Stand. Uh, I'd have you hold hands, but we can't. That's darn it. Just like feel the force of the person over there. Next to I'm just totally kidding. Don't do that. That'd be weird. All right. Anyway, let me pray and then, uh, then we'll go. God, we just thank you so much um, that we get to do what we get to do here at this church. I believe every person in here has been called to be here for such a time as this. Uh, that it is no accident that we exist at this church. Um, that we're here today hearing this message. That we're doing whatever we're doing. Lord, we believe that um, before we were even born, we were given a purpose and given gifts and put on this earth for a reason. And um, you had a strategy in play, a way to bless this world. And, and you want to do that through us. And God, we are humbled by that and, uh, and really grateful that we get to do this in your kingdom and get to be a part of all that, that you want to do in this world. And, and Lord, I just thank you for Lisa sharing her story and a little bit about the way that you are shaping her and, and the ways that she has stepped out of her comfort zone to do some things. What a witness to all of us. And hopefully we can translate that to others in our church and in this community. How can we get out of our comfort zones to see you do more uh, through us? And so, God, I pray for more of that. We just pray for more vision, for more disciples made through what we're doing. So, God, um, take us on that journey. Just keep us moving forward. Um, today, we just say that we love you. We thank you for loving us the way that you do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We have a gift for you before you go. They're out there on the tables. It's jar cake. Amy, did you make every one of those jar cakes? Wow, Amy Fisher is amazing. So uh, absolutely, you know, it's like, well done. Did you write the book, Not a Fan? Okay, no, you didn't write that one. Okay, there is a, the book, Not a Fan, also is out there. Um, you may have already read that. That's fine. Give it to somebody who hasn't read it. This book is a real influencer around here. Um, we love that, so read the book. If you haven't, again, give that to somebody else. But I love you. I appreciate you. Again, thank you for being here today. Y'all are good to go.